Hi, I'm Lynn Cornell, and welcome back to Journey Through the Bible Verse by Verse. We're going to pick it up and continue through our study in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and we left off in verse 16. And um, this is the event where Jesus has ridden in um, on the donkey. And said that this is this is a focus point. Right here is a focus point in a sense of full revelation from a public ministry perspective. That Jesus is, in a sense, publicly, I'm the Messiah. And even though the people are um, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, uh, none of that is taking the heart. The reason why I can say that is because <laughs> the next few days he's going to be betrayed, arrested, tried, crucified, and crucified. And then, our, and then people are going to, uh, the same crowd that is saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, will be among the same crowd who will be shouting, crucify him. But it is a major focus point right here. Jesus had just, remember he had um, raised Lazarus from the dead. He had healed, healed uh, blind people. Unquestionable, undeniable miracles. In a sense, so he had the credentials to be able to say that he was the Messiah. Now, the other problem, of course, is here is a king riding on the donkey. Not coming in in a charger, like, for example, the Roman emperors and the Roman officials would come in with white horses and great pomp. Even the horses was decorated. And Jesus came just on a donkey. Now, verse 17, he says, Meanwhile, the crowd which had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify. This is why, this is also why the crowd met him because they had heard he had done this sign. So uh, you had this buzz, this testimony, these people talking about what had gone on, talking about Jesus. Verse 19, then the Pharisees said to one another, you see, you have accomplished nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. So remember, their whole point was jealousy. They were jealous. They were envious that the crowd had so took taken to Jesus, that they were believing in Jesus. And of course, they're going to do everything they can to poison that. Um, now, verse 20. Now, some Greeks were among those who went up to worship at the festival. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and requested of him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Now, um, what this signifies is, in a sense, the far-reaching, at this point, of the reputation of Jesus, that the seeds of the gospel were being planted um, beyond Jerusalem, beyond Israel. Now, these Greeks were probably proselytes. They were probably in town celebrating the Passover. Okay, so they were looking for, and they had at least come to know and look for the Messiah themselves. Now, verse 23, Jesus replied to them, An hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I assure you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces a large crop. The one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servants will also be. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. Now, kind of an interesting response, right? Jesus, the, 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 um, Philip and Andrew comes to Jesus and says, hey, there's some Greeks who have traveled a long way and they really want to see you. And he says, well, the hours come that I must be lifted up. And he's probably saying this too in front of the Greeks. And so again, he's, he, he has been, remember, he has been saying some of these things from the beginning. And the idea is that this is a kind of a, a, a universal um, teaching and an and illustration of the operation of the word of God, that it is planted in the ground. And then when it is planted, it produces more. But he also, remember, encourages them and charges them. What the disciples, 
price of discipleship is. In other words, if you are my disciples, see, this is what the price of that discipleship is. That you must not love your life. <laughs> it is a total surrender. Now, if we can look forward, we see exactly what that means because there are Christians around the world and ever since this time who in some cases are called to the ultimate sacrifice, even martyrdom. So, um, verse 27, my, now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But that is why I came to this hour. Father, glorify yourself. The voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, it was thunders. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Now, this is a, a, amazing because, again, we always say, man, wouldn't it be neat if God spoke or God appeared in the sky? Notice the response. Both responses are strange. We'll see this one response, the latter response, later on. But this, I think it's more flippant when people say that. Oh, it's, an angel just spoke to him, right? You stand around, you hear this voice, and you say, well, an angel. Well, if a voice boomed from heaven, wouldn't you, even if it was an angel still, wouldn't you be curious about that? Now, the other, of course, heard the, the same voice, and they said, word thunder. Now, let's just say right off that, one, John is not saying that thunder is the voice of God. So, so when it thunders outside, it doesn't mean that it is the voice of God. This is what they said. This is what they interpret. But both responses that it's not, they, they kind of didn't clue in that they didn't hear what the voice said. In other words, what the voice said was more important. And that is, God from heaven gave, again, a testimony. You can, not, you can say a last validation of his representative, who Jesus is. Now, verse 30, Jesus responded, This voice came not for me, but for you. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. As for me... If I am lifted up from the earth, I would draw all men to myself. He said this to signify what kind of death he was about to die. Now, you sort of see Jesus given sort of an outline of what his death would accomplish. And you, we won't readily see this, of course, but this is one of the things we're going to do. The rule of this world would be judged. Okay. And, um, and the fact that if he then is lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. So, um, verse 34. Then the crowd replied to him, We have heard from the scriptures that the Messiah will remain forever. So, how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Now, again, part of the, the, the I think, issue here, when people come to a conclusion like this is, um, they fail to realize that they do not have all of the facts. In other words, Jesus is going to continue forever. But they are seeing his words through a single prison, prism. And then stumbling over it. Um, and if you notice, this is why Jesus doesn't spend a lot of time and explaining a lot of these statements. And, and, and by the way, we will cover a lot of these statements and other epistles and, and as we move through the New Testament. Now, verse 35, Jesus answered, The light will be with you only a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that darkness doesn't overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness doesn't know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become sons of the light. And Jesus said this and then went away and hid from them. Now, imagine if you're in a dark room. The room is completely dark. Your eyes have adjusted to the dark. Someone comes and cuts the light on. You, 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 you squint, right? And then maybe you shut the light off. 
For if you shut the light off, you plunge yourself back into darkness. And that's what Jesus is saying right here. I'm the light. You're squinting because of the light. In other words, receive the light, is what he's saying. Now notice this next, uh, the next verse, verse 37. Even though he had performed so many signs in their presence, they did not believe in him. But this was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet who said, Lord, who has believed our report? And who has the arm of the Lord been revealed to? This is why they were unable to believe because Isaiah also said that he had blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they would not see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and be converted and I will heal them. Isaiah said these things when he saw his glory and spoke about him. Now one kind of quick word about this passage of scripture here because always remember because this this passage of Isaiah is quoted several times in the New Testament. But keep in mind that it is always in the context. Even if you go back in Isaiah and read the context in which Isaiah even reported. This was the context that they were always in this scenario where people were, uh, uh, were who had been exposed to the word of God had been exposed to the truth and rejected it. And that's where this come in. In other words, the hardening of their heart uh, by God comes after they have rejected what God had said over and over again. And so that is always the context. Notice he just said right here, and despite all of the miracles that they saw, they still did not believe. So the, the, the outcome of that is blindness of their heart, hardness of their heart, blindness to the light, hardness of the heart. Uh, verse 42, nevertheless, many did believe in him, even among the rulers, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, so they would not be banned from the synagogue, for they loved the praise uh, from men more than the praise from God. And so... Um, even though, and again, we can also say that Nicodemus probably was in this crowd of Pharisees that uh, that believed in Jesus. Of course, you remember he came to Jesus by night. Why? Because he did not want to um, <laughs> uh, be banned from the synagogue. Notice, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. That's a sad testimony. Now, Nicodemus would, by the way, overcome this by the time we get to the end of the book. Verse 44, then Jesus cried out, the one who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And the one who sees me, um, see, the one who sees him who sent me. Verse 45 again, uh, the one who sees me, um, the one who sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my word and does and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Uh, this is the one, the one who rejects me and doesn't accept my sins has as his judge, the word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken of my own, but my father who sent me has given me a command as to what I should say and what I should speak. No, I know that his commandments is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Sorry for butchering up, up you know. Um, uh, sometimes when I read, uh, I, I have to always fight against um, interjecting other translations that I'm so used to, namely the King James. But anyway, um, this sort of is Jesus' sort of last public address. And, and as we go into chapter 13 next time, this is, you know, from here from the end of the book, it, it, there, there will be um, no longer a public address from Jesus. That's going to come through his apostles. Uh, this is also not only an address, but it's also sort of a testimony. And think about it. He had just said um, as a testimony, the light, he's given the light. If they reject this light, they're going to be in darkness. If they accept the light, they're going to be in light, but expected to walk in the light. So, um, as I said, this would be Jesus' last public um, address. And so he would then now go, um, and it, we see that we're going to go into the Last Supper, the very night he is betrayed. 
All right, so um, we'll pick this up in chapter 13, and I'll see you then.